may be that Justice Fanjoy is guilty of showing a measure of bias in this statement. He was, after all, justice in Brant County for 26 years and spent much of his time in this room. But it would as well be hard to find disagreement today with his observations, our being here to celebrate the reopening of the Brantford Courthouse and in this most magnificent and interesting courtroom. Since 1852, the Brant County Courthouse has been a landmark, a point of reference around which the city of Brantford has grown. It was built as a response to a newly defined and fast-growing county that needed to represent itself as urbane and with the institutional framework necessary to govern its own affairs. With this building, Brant County came of age. As the county grew, so did the courthouse, and the story of this process is the subject of this presentation. has now undergone a restoration and renovation of special importance, unequaled in scale since the renovations of 1909. It is important to know that Ontario Realty Corporation protocols now in place involve reviewing the history and heritage aspects of this site so that they inform the design and are part of the construction process. This conservation process recognizes the tangible and intangible value of heritage projects, and that architectural work must reveal historic significance rather than obscuring or destroying it. To do otherwise makes it difficult to convey to others our history, individual and collective achievements. Much of this process and the restoration work that followed are evident in this courtroom. It is in the research and restoration of the four Braskellite fixtures, the finishing and repair of the cherry floorboards, the cleaning, repair and varnishing of the quarter cut oak paneling and rails, the staining and repair of the folding seats and furniture from the 1909 renovations. It is in this conservation of the early 1852 plaster on the south wall and restoration of the plaster cornice. It is in knowing that the wood surrounds on the north wall were once windows and that in the rough plaster above the 1909 dais can be traced the profile of an earlier dais from 1852. Through the circular vent in the middle of the courtroom ceiling, you can just see the cupola and the roofscape of the first courthouse forever enclosed in the 1886 attic. The circular drum and the window of the cupola the turned metal roofing, the paired buff brick chimneys of 1852, the detached and long abandoned flagpole, carved stair treads, newel post and 1886 stair tower. The year is 1870. The courthouse has assumed its place in the community, children, bicycles, strollers, horses and carriages pass by the impressive Grant County Courthouse. Evident as well as the Governor's House, newly built registry office by Kivis Tully, and the agricultural landscape just beyond the picket fence. The cupola, tiled metal roof and chimneys preserved above us can be clearly seen. had talent and the good fortune to arrive in Canada from Wales to practice at a time when buildings of such sophistication were in demand. His practice would thrive and go on to have a significant influence on the architecture of southern Ontario. His design was neoclassical in style, but the iconography and decorative focus was eclectic. Palladian inspired in its symmetrical facade and projecting wings and Italian renaissance in the employment of a rusticated stonework rounded Tuscan column orders, Baroque keystones and free-form interpretation of the royal arms and the raised parapet. The 
work was well received. So much so that Turner presented the Brantford design to the town of St. Thomas, who proceeded to build a duplicate. Turner went on to design Victoria Square to the south, which emphasized the courthouse setting and set the tone for all future development around it. 34 years later, Turner was invited back to design the 1886 Victorian editions. It would be one of his last built works. Bradford at that time was a dynamic city with a keen sense of opportunity and potential. A town of new buildings, commerce and streets. A town grappling with the need for services and industry, adapting to technology with growing demands for educational, social and cultural economic development. A strong legal presence was necessary to ensure that peace, order and good government was preserved. The courts were busy and the town flourished. Mohawk Chapel was built in 1785, not far from what would be the town of Brantford. It was at the center of a parallel community, that of the Six Nations, who shared the land and resources along the Grand River with European settlers. They were a newly founded native community relocated after the British transfer of land from native populations in 1763. For the Six Nations people, their investment came in the form of the 1784 land transfer, whereby land, six miles to either side of the Grand River, from Lake Erie to Brant's Crossing, were purchased from the Mississauga Indians and set aside as long as the sun shines and the water runs. This is the new home of the Six Nations, allies of the British, dispossessed from their traditional territory east of the Niagara River. Central to this history and the negotiations that took place was Joseph Brandt, a Mohawk leader and British military officer after whom the new county was named. This unique and extraordinary land agreement set into place the terms of settlement for the Six Nations people. It initiated a process of accommodation whereby European settlers came to occupy and legally own or lease much of their land. Today, these are parallel communities with distinct histories with a sense of identification with the land and the systems of justice. Much of the history and heritage of Brant County, including the early activities of its courts and legal system, stems from this relationship and the transfer of land. This map shows the initial crossing of the river, the identification of the new owners, recent sales and the persistence of Indian property including the surviving Mohawk village. The decision for settlers to locate at the furthest navigatable point inland on the Grand River was a wise choice because lake traffic from the United States could be serviced here. It ensured that Brantford would be the regional center for the transfer of raw materials manufacturing and commerce. As for the name, it was decided to combine the name of the county with its geographical circumstance of the Ford River. And so, the Township of Brantford was formed. The unprecedented growth of the economy and population generated the need for family law, as well as judicial and legal support. The increasing activities of the law society, sheriff's offices, jail, land registry office, and additional courts were apparent. Brandt County Courthouse had to respond. This resulted in a series of significant additions and renovations all between the years of 1852 and 1909. This resulted in a judicial complex of which the court building was just one part. Much of this building remains and gives the site its significance. The plan of these building phases are shown in color and provide a sense of the complex nature of this site. 